just a reminder that we meet every this is the last meeting of the year yay so this is the final one we don't meet in june and july so just an fyi there but we do meet the fourth monday of every uh month uh, starting august to may and <clears throat> start at 10. Um, and then we have our shared google drive you will have ELA credit at the end of this and just a good place to network and share great things you all are doing uh, first thing, we'll welcome and sign in. So making sure that you all get signed in so that you can uh, have that documented. So if anybody ever asks and say, yep, they were there. Uh, we'll do a quick little check-in. <clears throat> I'll go through some updates and elementary STEM and STEAM. Uh, Whitney Hurt and I believe Kaylee Mark will be able to share some information with us on that of some things they're doing. Uh, because that was a request of just, you know, getting an elementary thing started and then GT district highlights and resources that we have available. So going on, uh, let's do just a quick check in. How do you feel today? And since the Mario movie, the Mario Brothers movie came out, I thought that would be a cute one to have uh, up for us to do. So if you will, would not care to drop in the hat in the chat what number you're feeling today so i'm trying to look here okay a two. Ooh, that's a good one i like it too i think i'm kind of i've got a new computer i've got a laptop uh -huh. rather than a chromebook and i can't uh -huh. figure out how to get everybody's faces off the screen so i can see them. oh uh, does anyone know can you oh, see I did, I did it i did it it's did gone. you do it okay you're good you're okay. good We've got some threes, sixes. I could see a six because it being the end of the year, just trying to get it to the end. I understand that. Three, a two, awesome. I don't know. I don't know. Where am I? I think I'm 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 between a probably I'm with somebody. Kim, what are you? Did you get to put in the I'm chat? Trying. I clicked on it, but it ain't doing you, nothing because you can it. just unmute and say okay, it. There That's we fine. Go. Oh. I fixed it. Oh, I am a one. You're between a four and a six. I can go with that too. <laughs> Ones, twos. I I feel the six. I do. I, I'm kind of that way too. It's like there's so much going on. It's like, oh, we'll make it though. We'll get there. We'll get there. Kim, what did you think you were? I think I did a one, two, three. A one, two, three. Like I'm a three. <laughs> a three. Oh, that's a good one. Awesome. All right. Well, that's a good one. Of your reports done. I've got everything finished. All I like is mailing Ooh. out some uh, stuff. Oh gosh, I can think progress reports. I still got oh, some okay. of those to send out. Great. Well, I like to do the little check-ins just because I think that's a good way for us to check in with our students. And then I'm trying to pick some different ones so that you all can uh, get, you can just copy and paste those if you want to do that with your students or share those. But I still think Baby Yoda is my favorite of all of them. I do like my Baby Yoda. Um, but so glad you all are here today. So checking in. So I think we've got a lot of mixed emotions in the room. Um, with a lot of different uh, different reasons. And some of us are just happy because the year, year is coming to an end and can hopefully have a little bit of time off here. Real quick, just wanted to make sure and do some updates. I was in a meeting on Friday with Kathy Anderson and um, just a reminder about all those reports are due June 1st. Uh, it's that uh, GT coordinator one stop. So making sure that you're getting your reports done and those taken care of. She did announce, and it was also in the news you can use. If you are not getting that, make sure you're signed up for news to, you can use. It's through OSEAL, the Office of Special Education and Early Learning. But Kathy puts, because GT is in the uh, division of OSEAL, she puts updates in there and this gifted student service plan was in there. There will be a new version in Infinite Campus released in June, and that will be able to be available for the 23-24 year. There will be a different, um, she will have a training in the one-stop shop, and she will also have some office hours, which is not mentioned on there. She did say that Friday. Um, 
in the meeting I was with her on. So um, just kind of being aware of that. If you, you will need to talk to your IC person that takes care of giving everyone permission so that you get the permission to be able to access that. But those are real handy. So just making sure that you're aware that that is coming and gonna be, so watch out for that. And where it will be seen is on the um, news you can use from OSIL is where she'll have the dates and everything. And then I'll put that on the Padlet too for you all um, when it comes out and I see it there. But those are some things. Uh, know most of you all know this better, a lot better than I do. Uh, Western Kentucky, we know there's, they've got the SCATs, they've got the VAMPI things available for students to be able to sign up for. I uh, found some other things that I have put on the Padlet too that you might be able to share with some kids who might could have some additional opportunities. The Gage Summer Workshop for you all June 14th. If you're interested in uh, taking a look at that, that's going to be on the Elizabethtown campus. If that's something of interest to you to be able to attend, there's that available. And I also put on the Padlet, there's all kinds of, most of them are at no charge, but the Challenger Center is doing a lot of neat PD for teachers. And a lot of them are at no charge. So I do have that on the Padlet and also have a link to it. Let me put throw that no it's in the padlet i did not have a separate link to it that you can look at but you can register for with all kinds of different like there's a computer science there's a lego league i think also in there so taking a look at that also wanted to make sure you are aware of this because like i said earlier gt is in the office of ocl special education and early learning the applications are still open for the Kentucky Leeds Academy. This is for anyone who's interested in getting like their master's or rank one as a special ed director. So just wanting to make sure you're aware that that's out there and available. And I will be putting this uh, PowerPoint. I just am waiting to add some things to it, but I'll drop it in the Google Drive too. But that is something just to make sure that you are aware of that that is available um, to you all if you're interested. Kevin, if you're, I think you're on here, you asked the question about technology um, identification for students. And so I did bring that up and Kathy has added that as a, as a thought. And in the meeting, someone mentioned the only way they thought that it might would even be possible would be through creativity, but they, they did bring up the point and I hadn't really thought of it this way, but maybe this will cause a spark and maybe an interest in, who knows, maybe get a new category. But like we have students who are welders and carpenters who are definitely gifted in those trades and we're not being able to identify them either. And so that was kind of brought up in the meeting of maybe we need to look at if that's an area of giftedness, maybe to uh, at a national level, maybe they will start looking at, but creativity was the only thing in the meeting that they mentioned might be a way, if they're not testing high in math, if they're not getting it through science or leadership, that might be another way, <clears throat> was the only thing that anyone was able to come up with in the meeting that I was in. So did check on that for you, just wanted to make sure and share that. But does anybody have any questions on any of that? Because I think that's my last slide. I'm gonna hand it over to Whitney and uh, Kaylee here in just a second. But any questions on any of those or anything? There had been a request in our last meeting to kind of discuss elementary, like some, some of you are starting uh, the thought of doing a STEAM or STEM night, whichever one you choose, whether you add the art component or not. Uh, in it. And so uh, Whitney from Knott County and Kaylee uh, Markham from Pikeville had said that they would share some information. I do have a folder um, that I have added everything that uh, I'm getting for elementary STEM and STEAM in our participant folder. So I will add that there. So I'm not sure who is ready because that involves alternate avenues to create a certain outcome. Kids can't be great at technology, can be great. 
but not great. You are correct. I agree with you, Kevin. And so that's what they were saying, that that might just be a missing piece that needs to be identified. I agree with you completely on that. I know there's kids that are not being identified that definitely have giftedness in areas. I put the participant folder in the link. Um, I'm not sure, uh, Ms. Uh, Whitney, uh, Ms. Markham, or who wants to go first, who wants to share uh, what you might have, but just, you know, anything to be able to share with the group of some things that you all are doing with the last time we met, so. Okay, the, the reason I wanted to share my screen is because as I go through like how we set it up, it's easier to understand if you see it, but um, our elementary uh, ones, it has required like a lot of additional help, but the gear up um, SOAR teams have been really good with uh, helping me set up a lot of this stuff, but uh, we kind of keep like an open like Google Doc to where when we get ideas that we would all go in there and like if we have an idea for a station, um, we could put like the types of stations and stuff that we would have. And that's how we initially start getting the ideas rolling for the elementary. Um, and we have six different elementary schools and we have tried to do one each year at a different one because the very first one we did, it actually caused a lot of trouble I had to defend myself in a board meeting on why I had it at one school and not the others <laughs> so we're having to like travel just that's just a word of caution but um, it ended up being because that was where the majority of my volunteers were because these were this first night um, we had over 200 people there and so I needed a lot of volunteers but um, some of the things that we did like you can see like the stations didn't require a whole lot so like we had the stomp rockets were um like pvc pipe and two liter bottles and they would make a paper rocket like not a whole lot of materials uh was needed the paint catapult i gave them like um the tongue compressor type popsicle sticks and they were able to build like a catapult and launch uh, paint balls with the uh, cotton balls they would dip them in paint and they had a target but like this was kind of how we set it up when we got ideas from there and we've done this exact same thing with every one of them that we've done um we would make a Facebook page and kind of create FOMO like fear of missing out within the community and the entire month leading up to the events we would make posts like uh this one and it would be like showcasing one station like every couple days and as people saw the different things it got them like more excited about it and so like um we did one that even this was a post that was just showing we had businesses around donate like um stem kits and these were like 10 to 15 dollars at walmart and so like the community in a way got involved by they would just send like a little kit um and then uh we also, if I can get, hang on, it won't let me click. Uh, these are some me, pictures from one of them that we had. And so uh, you can see that we had like a drone obstacle course. And so all that required was hula hoops and we hung them on different like heights and they were able to code their drones in order to fly through them um we had these were the stomp rockets uh the catapult painting and so with this we took one of the donations and we said whoever hit the target first got one of the donated prizes and so she won the slime lab um we had slime making kits we had grace henderson that i've said before she come in and set up like the um canvas painting and then this was the catapult building as well. Um, the best advice that I could give if you're going to have like a lot of stations and you're setting this up is if you can see in this picture, I had someone, a couple people stationed at the front. We had a lot of stations and a two hour time span. So in each of these, they had like squares of the different stations. So as everyone came in and signed in, each station we set to a 30 minute limit and so they got to pick their four cards 
And that was kind of like their passport to go from one station to the next. And it was a timed because if we let them like just go around, they either would all pile up in one area or um, they wouldn't completely finish one of the projects. And so they got to pick like their passports and then they would go and the person at that station would take their card. And um, and that was really kind of it. Um, I do have an example somewhere. Uh, we sent home RSVPs just to um, get more information out. But I did have a flyer, if I can find it, of one of them. And I used Canva to make the free flyers and we would post them in all the schools. This was the high school one. I couldn't find the elementary one that I'd made, but um, that was really kind of it. For each of our nights, it has um, the most expensive one that we did was like, it was like a thousand dollars total, but that was because 500 of it was the cost of the paint class so the ones that we didn't do the paint class on it was just the uh, materials and 500 of that came from um, remake learning days from KET they were um, great to work with like the mini grants the only thing is if you use them you have to do it within their window so they will give you like a spring window that it has to be done but they will also help you advertise within your community on KET um, and on BitSource, their Tracy Tackett is the one who you would contact for all of that, but she is the one who will help like advertise it for you. And there's a website for it and she will put your event on the website and all of that kind of thing. But uh, that is just kind of like some of the things that we've done and ideas and how we've organized it all. But it does require a lot of hands. <laughs> A lot of volunteers do you use some of your high school students to help with it for the elementary that's just a question i have i'm sorry if i'm jumping ahead i do else. We, my high school kids are also part of the county's um leadership team and so any event that's ever going on it's the same kids that are using it but they are always um doing stuff like they're all the time needing to help with that for their leadership stuff and so I, it's the same kids but they're um, always there to help but I have found even though they're the high school kids they end up doing the stations with yeah. the other kids too but uh, yeah they do they do come and help and uh, it's I would say you know we I open it to all of them but I would say I always have at least six or seven I actually show up to every one of them to help out that's great. Awesome. Okay. Um, wonderful. Um, well, question. Ms. Yes. She said for, it sounded like she was talking about several nights. Was this a one night event or is this more than once a year? I, I do it once a year for elementary and once a year for the high school, but we've, I've done okay. it for the last three years I believe okay. and so uh, most of those pictures and stuff were from the various years but uh, I've done it three years in a row but I'll do one night at one of the elementary schools and then one night at the high school every year but now this year I did do an art yeah. night at every one of them but that's not typical <laughs> it's like a little much it, it was a, it was a lot uh, I think I started in March, the second week in March until the first week of May, I did seven family nights. So it was a lot. <laughs> and she had a grant, Kim, to help with that, that we put like a on the Padlet, we put the, uh, it's the art um, grant, wasn't it? Whitney? Kentucky Arts Council. Um, mm -hmm. I did, one of them was called Teaching Art Together, but and then there was another one, but I can't remember what it was called. But there's, I, they've got 10 to 12 different ones yeah. on Becky Arts Council. Yeah, and we've got that on the Padlet that we'll put in there too for you. Uh, Ms. Markham, you've got some to share. Do you need to be able to, hold, to share your screen? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. So the way that we do STEAM night is a little bit different. Um, we are smaller and we only have two schools. So each year we host it at the elementary school. We have a STEAM team. So 
myself, our technology coordinator, and a couple other teachers kind of get together to organize it. Uh, so here's kind of just like a little map. So what we do is we send out a Google form each year and the teachers that are interested, uh, we kind of use it as a showcase um, for what students get to do as they go through junior high and high school. Um, and then those have different stations with our kids from the high school um, or the junior high and then also the teachers. And then there's also some activities and I'll just kind of scroll through some of these pictures. Um, but each year we have like a little sign in table here and then we always build like a little arc so that the kids can take pictures with their parents and their family. Um, and then they just kind of follow the arrows um, and then kind of similar to how Whitney was saying with the passport, um, we have a little paper where they get stamps um, and the students give them a stamp each time that they visit um, that station. Um, so we had like roller coasters. So our kids in the elementary school built um, roller coasters that you can put the marbles down in. Um, and then it goes through um, so the kids could drop marbles in and see all the different uh, roller coasters. We had a Minecraft station. Um, we compete in the STLP Minecraft competition um, in the junior high and the elementary school. So we had a station for students there um, where they could play Minecraft and they could also watch the videos that they created. Uh, then we kind of had like a little indie and like Sphero station um, where the kids could just kind of get together and kind of play and use those. Uh, we had our racing station, um, and I'll show you pictures of each of these stations as we go through. Um, we had a scratch where they kind of have um, games that the students have created so they could play those. Um, the VEX competition and then make code, which is similar to scratch. And then we had our sumo block competition. Um, and then we have camp invention and then the planetarium that they could go through. So, so this was kind of our flyer, um, thanks to our tech uh, coordinator Neil, he created that for us. Cute. And so each year we try to have a cool little theme. Last year we had rockets. This year was our light bulb. Um, and then let me see. So this was at the STLP competition, but this is a sumo bot competition if you don't know what it is. Um, so each year our sixth graders get to go and compete for that. And then what we do for STEAM night is I break the robots apart. I let the winner from the sixth grade go against all the fifth graders. Um, so we have like a 25 minute window where we kind of get everybody in um, and tell them to, you know, come watch the sumo bot competition. Uh, this is the arch that we had for this year and our little light bulb guy. And then here's our racing. So they can come through. The kids are still working on the go-karts. Um, and then they have like a little presentation that they do. And then here was our Minecraft station. So this was the video of one that was created. There's Jackie's in my class. So he was presenting, allowing the kids to kind of play um, on the worlds and check those out. And then this was our elementary school. And then we had a little CAD station. Um, this was one of the projects that we did, the scrap that I think Ms. Belcher showed. Uh, so we had Coleman here who was kind of giving a little bit lesson in like CAD and um, 3D animation um, and showing his video and how he created it as well. And then here we had our little VEX competition. I convinced Mr. Trimble to, uh, <laughs> to play um, as well. So it was kind of really awesome that the kids got to, we had the robots that we had built so they couldn't make changes to those, but they could drive them and do each of the challenges. Um, and we had two robots, so it actually, it, it did kind of get a little bit full, but we kind of just let them do like one of them and then shoot them across the board. Um, and then they had to go to their next station. Um, this was the flyer for last year. And then we also have little stations with like squishy circuits um, and usually a teacher station it. And then also students in the high school and the elementary school help with that. And that was our arch for last year. And then I think that's all the pictures. You guys have any questions? I do, always. You know me, I'm always full of them. Like with some of the things that you're talking about, Ms. Morgan, uh, like the bots and those types of things, the funding for those, how did you all get those? So that was through the NSF grant um, that okay. we got a couple years with Neil. 
Um, mm -hmm. So that was how the funding came through that. I know Floyd County should have some of that as well because we were partners with them in that grant. Mm -hmm. um, some of those some were of also the ARI grant, I believe some of the bots were uh, because with the, before they ended with those. Right, um, I think. Yeah. And then like the go-kart was like a grant. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So a lot of a it was not. A couple of it came from the, um, what is that grant through um, Kisty Grant? There was a Kisty Grant and then what was the other one? Um, there's mm -hmm. a KBEC grant actually, isn't there? Yeah, there was a KBEC yes. grant, I believe. That was the ARI. There was some of them I think that went through that too. The, the learning innovation grants, right? I think yeah. is what that was. Okay. So just uh, kind of all mixture of different grants and different teachers have applied for and Okay, so that's how some of that was purchased, because that's always a question I know is, is you know, how getting uh, the the sources to, to be able to get uh, some of that. And some of it was some of it from the engineering class too, that would have been another grant with Mr. Pigman. Yes, that's okay. where all the VEX came through. Um, okay. Was through that. Okay, all right. And for those of you, if you're not familiar, um, Mr. Pigman, has uh, donated to different schools in the region for high schools of trying to help them get an engineering pathway in their high school. And if you don't have one and you have a teacher, that's one of the hardest things is finding a teacher who is certified to teach the engineering pathway. He will donate money to your schools, to your high school, to be able to help get that pathway if you have that certified teacher. So if you're interested in that, be sure to reach out. Um, to, to let us know and we can try to help get you connected with him because he he's fabulous. He really works and is trying to help our region because he is from Knott County. Um, and so um, he helps and funds, I think he gave $50,000 to Pipeville Independent and there's been other districts. Some of you are probably aware, but if you have a teacher who could help to do that pathway, um, he will help in getting them trained, paying for their training, and then helping to get those materials. So just let us know and we can get you that information of, to contact and uh, get that uh, to see how he might could help you all. Yeah, he, uh -huh. he also funds all the TSA. Um, so if you guys aren't familiar with that, um, he's pretty much hosted yeah. the whole region. He paid for us to go to state and he's paying for us to go to nationals in the TSA. So if that's something that you're interested in being involved in, then. Yes, so be sure uh, if you if you are not aware of that and do not, haven't been in contact, let us know and we will introduce you to uh, Mr. Pigman because he definitely has done a lot for the area and is always looking to help another school, especially <laughs> in our region here. Uh, so, you know, don't hesitate on that one. Um, is there uh, any questions for Ms. Markham? I'd like a list of like possible places where you can get grant funding. I've written one and that was like two years ago and it, it was rather significant, but uh, what are some other places that you all have written and received grants from? Uh, I don't know, I, I just... I think there's so many on there. If you Google it, there's just too many to kind of figure out which ones are the best ones, you know, to seek funding from. Let me, I will put in Have the you, Padlet. Um, I'll put in the link to the Padlet there, Kim, some of the ones that I know of that okay. people have gotten in the area. Um, like uh, the Unsung Heroes one, I know Jesse Lucas got at Pipewell High School. And he purchased some more of the bots. I believe I forgot that one, Miss Markham, too. And that's one that if you apply for it, you get the you get you have the option to win like a two thousand dollar grant. But if you get the whole big grant, it's like there's like different levels. Is it twenty thousand, and then fifteen and ten? 
like the first place overall, second place gets additional money. So that's in there. That ended in April, but they do that every year. I think it's at the bottom of the grant list, but that is on um, the Padlet that I just put in the uh, chat. Let me go back to sharing my screen. Let's see. And I will, where do you go? Where did you all go? Ah, I lost you. There you are. Okay. But if I click on the Padlet that I just dropped in the chat, a lot of those things are in there and you all cannot see that because I am not where I need to be. So if you look at the grants, that is the grant that um, um, Whitney was talking about with the Kentucky Arts Council, NEA Foundation Learning and Leadership Grants. That's a good one. Um, also, I need to write NSF in there too. I'll try to add that in there. But these are some ones that I'm aware of that some teachers have gotten. Uh, and if there's anything else, let me know and we'll add uh, Invention Land Grants. Um, Dollar General does some literacy grants and Boya, Unsung Heroes grant that was due in April. But those are some just some different sources. Um, and as you all do get grants, if you let me know, I'll add those into that section because it, because it kind of helps if you know people, you realize it is something that can be attainable. Toyota does grants. That's another one. So if you look on their grant page, and they can give you some significant dollars depending on what that you are applying for. Uh, so keep that in mind. I think GM has a grant and Lowe's also has a grant that you can apply for um, that you might be interested in and looking at on some of those uh, for some grants. But um, let's see, the camp invention that Ms. Marka mentioned, uh, that is a student opportunity that there's one in Pikeville and there's a couple going on in Richmond too, uh, here in Kentucky that you might wanna offer to some of your PTP, uh, primary talent pool kids, um, because it's K through six and then some of your other GT students, there is a cost, but there's a lot of fun things that they get to do with that. But a couple of different locations, like I said, Pikeville has one, and then Richmond is having a couple, or a couple I believe at EKU. Uh, with those so just uh, being aware of those trying to look what else because the challenger learning center professional development workshops are there too I was going to talk about that later but since I got it pulled up I'll go with that does anybody have any other questions or does anybody have anything they want to share about their elementary steam night because uh, um, we had um, Ms. Hurt and uh, Ms. Markham on the meeting last time and that was a question and they had agreed to share but if anybody else has anything please please share because it just helps uh, and Miss Morgan if you will share like the flyer send me an email with the flyer and some of the things you shared in the map I'll drop that in the folder too for those because I know you shared the folder but I wasn't sure what we would want to put in that uh, elementary sim if you wouldn't care to do that for me thank you thank you but does anybody else have anything? I always like to learn I'm all about the learning. If not, I hope that was helpful uh, for some of you that are thinking about, and, and I would kind of say, you know, uh, starts, you know, maybe a little smaller because I'm guessing that, you know, I know Pikeville has grown over the years. And so, cause it started smaller because I was in the district when the first one was done. And so it wasn't as big, but I think it's something that they keep growing. Is that true for Knott County too, Ms. Hurt? It is, but um, we've actually had, I, I'm not sure this last year, we've not had as much participation as mm -hmm. we usually have, but you know, we've, our, I feel like yeah. our community has went through a whole lot. Um, yeah. We're, it is starting to become a thing where people are definitely like mm -hmm. anticipating it and waiting for it and uh, and that kind of thing but like I said like yeah. this year it was there was a significant drop in attendance this year but okay. there's a lot of a lot of factors I feel like that played into that 
Yeah. And like the number of stations, I'm guessing you had more. <clears throat> have you increased the number of stations too that you've done? Like kind of starting a little smaller and working your way up? Yeah, it all depends on each school that I've had it at has had various different volunteers. So I kind of have to wait and see, um, you know, how many I have willing to help. Uh, because if I've only got two to three, then we're going to, we have to do, we'll, we'll do something bigger at each station probably, but not as many. Um, and I think the most stations that we've had um, is eight. And mm -hmm. that was whenever we had to do the limit to full, only getting to visit four. Um, but then the least that we had was probably this year to where we had one where we did um, one what was his name Jason Lindsay when we had him come in um he done like a presentation and then they got to go to like four very small stations um after that and so that one was probably the smallest but the presentation if you ever got an opportunity to get him to come in um his presentations are great and uh it was like he was captivating from kindergarten all the way up through the high school kids like every one of them <clears throat> loved him <laughs> Again. His name is uh, Jason Lindsay, and he is a meteorologist, um, but he is with uh, hookedonscience.org is uh, where you can find all of his uh, stuff from. Now, he has different options, and like he can come and just do like mm -hmm. a presentation during school hours, or he can do like a family night, but what I would suggest really is he he can do presentations and breakout um, hands-on sessions or just a presentation. And I would, in my opinion, just his presentation would have been plenty because his hands-on stations were kind of like, um, if, if the kids were older than like third grade, they wouldn't be interested in them. And it was like little building blocks and that kind of thing. But his actual presentation that he did all the way up through high school was loved it but if you're doing something like with little kids you could do his hands-on stations too but he's got different yeah. types of packages it's pretty expensive um he cost it was eight hundred dollars for him to come but that was him coming throughout the entire school day doing uh multiple like big presentations through the school day and then doing a presentation during family night and doing the breakout session that's not bad at all no and so and he came from Lexington um but so I'm thinking it's like half that if you just give get him to do one or the other and maybe even less if you get him to just do a presentation in the evening or just a presentation in the school and not the different different sections the only thing is give him plenty of time because if you get up leave a message with him today you won't hear from him for two or three weeks <laughs> and then he'll get back he needs like an assistant because he's doing meteorology plus this and all these other things but he was he was good price and uh he was very um the kid he's he set a table on fire <laughs> and the kids were <laughs> absolutely blown away because they thought that like they had just witnessed something illegal in the middle of a school day <laughs> But no, he he was he was great. But uh, he, like I said, I would I suggest just his presentations if you've got older kids. <clears throat> all right. Any other questions? Awesome questions, you all. But just a great way. Welcome. Uh, hope this is helpful for some of you that are looking at creating and maybe branching out and trying to do uh, start a STEAM or STEM night with your elementary. I think it's always good to partner also with your high school in using those kids, especially like what you were saying with leadership and letting those kids kind of showcase sometimes their talent. I think that's always a positive and they can even put that on applications. Your high school kids can, they can say helping with planning a STEAM night for elementary. And that always looks great for them in applications and actually volunteering that lets them get some of those volunteer hours too but that's awesome I did put the hooked on science link in the chat uh, and I also added it to the padlet for under presentations for you all as well so that's in there all right so 
Next is some of my favorite stuff is those uh, GT district highlights and I'm just putting them in alphabetical order and I don't know is, um, let me see, is, I'm looking, is Breathit in the room? I don't think so. But Breathit had shared some projects that they had done with their students, with their GT kids. And so she kind of uh, shared those with me that, um, some of the projects that they had their GT kids uh, uh, sharing and doing with the projects. And I was going to let her talk, but where she's not here, I will not. We will go on to McGoffin, shared a couple of things. I did put both of those on those, Jerrica. I, I don't know if you can unmute and talk, but you had your Robotics National and your eighth grade leather working, I thought was very interesting to look at there. Um, but I have those on there as well. If you want to, can you unmute and talk a second? Um, yeah, I can. So with our leather working, um, I started that last year and actually it all started with, I had a bunch of L8 tabs and um, one of my coworkers actually uh, does a lot of leather working on his own. And I just asked him, I was like, do you think that we could involve our seventh and eighth grade gifted students and maybe let them, you know, like work on something, like create something. And, and so I partnered with him and we kind of like worked it out and, um, you know, decided on a little lesson. And we talked about like Appalachia history and, um, the kids absolutely loved it. And I actually have some over here, but, um, they got to sew like with leather needles and which are very dull. And um, they got to pick their own L8 tabs because I had tabs from years and years and years ago. And then I had new tabs and um, they got to dye their leather. And um, it was just, they had a blast with that. And then, and so I actually, since we did that with seventh and eighth grade, um, I have planned to do like a different leather activity each year with the eighth grade and maybe let the keychains be like a seventh grade project and and my coworker he he is um he's my neighbor and so he said he could like create figure out some kind of thing for the eighth graders to do but um so with our robotics team um honestly whenever I became the robotics coach in McGoffin County um I had no idea <laughs> what it was but um, I partnered with the Challenger Learning Center in Hazard, and they truly were, I mean, they've been my Jackie. I don't know if you guys know Jackie from the Challenger Center, but she has been my mentor, and she showed me how to start our robotics team and what we needed to do. We'd, part, we'd, we'd go through the first Lego League, and if any of you guys, like, are interested in starting a robotics team, we do the first Lego League challenge, which is ages nine through 14. So I just use, I'm stationed at our middle school. So I just use seventh and eighth grade right now, but we kind of started, I tried to start a team last year and it really, COVID still kind of played a big part in screwing everything up for us. <laughs> so <laughs> this year was really our first team. And, and you see the pictures there. We had five kids. We went to regionals, which was in hazard and we kind of went for the experience but these kiddos really just took hold of it like I, I I brag on them all the time I say when you start with robotics like when these kids literally start programming and using code they understand it so much better than we do and so they kind of took a hold of it and they were grand champs so um, after that, we went to state in February, and that was in at Northern Kentucky University, and um, they placed there, and so what they do in this competition is um, they have robot games where they code their robots to do um, a few different challenges on the board. You see the boy there who is um, working with the robot, but um, that's one, that's 25% of their final score and then they also have an innovation project which every year first lego league releases a like a a certain theme and this year it was super powered so we had to 
solve a problem like in our community. So what our kids did was um, they decided because of the flooding and like ice storms that we've had in the past, they decided to use um, solar powered charging stations. And um, so with that, they had to present their project and like tell why they wanted to do that. They had to use research. That was their innovation project. And then they also were judged on core values and they were judged on their robot design. So they had to talk about their robot and they placed at state. And I think we placed fourth overall, but then we also got first in our innovation project. So that gave us a bid to nationals, which was in New Jersey. So we were the first team in the region to actually get to go. Um, I know some other teams have like made it there, but they weren't able to go because it was right smack dab in the middle of testing and it was a lot of money, but our school board was really helpful and they um, funded majority of this trip for our kids. And the reason they did that was because um, they were just so proud of them and we've never had anything like this in McGoffin County. So um, I think when we were fourth overall, we were up there with first, second, third, and fifth place were all like private academies and like a lot of collegiate schools. So um, it was just a big wow. deal for Coffin County. So they funded it and we went to New Jersey and the competition was at um, the Liberty Science Center um, in Jersey City. So right out Side, like from the dirt from the Liberty Science Center, you can see the Statue of Liberty. So, um, we we got to we had like our judging session, which is where they presented their innovation project and all that stuff on Saturday, and that was from like nine to nine thirty. So we had the rest of that day to explore New York, and none of those kids had ever been to New York. So, it was it was a really good trip. And then on Sunday we had our robot games all day long. And they actually, they didn't place like overall, but they did bring home an award, which was uh, the Breakthrough Award. And um, so that was a huge deal. So we've been super proud of them. And that that has taken up, uh, robotics has taken up a lot of my time this year, but it's been worth it. It definitely has been worth it. So that is awesome. So proud of you all and your team. That is Thank fabulous. You. That is awesome. Um, on, I noticed in one of the flyers, they have like a free, that's free, the training that they do for the robotics, because I was noticing that on the Padlet. Um, let me go back to it here. And you tell me, Jerrica, that's just a question for me to know. I was just wondering, is this what you, because it's through the Challenger Center. Yes. But um, this First Lego League Coaches Academy. Yes. Is that that's that's kind of what you've been has been helping you somewhat so there's yes. a, if, if you are interested you need to try to go to this and actually we our team has been asked to present there this summer so I think on the 18th is when we're going to be presenting like our our kids are coming too so um I never have been to one of those because I told you it, it's all been very new to me this year was mm -hmm. really the first year that I took hold of it and kind of understood what was going on but that coaches academy right there is a great place to start if you're interested in starting um a team and and you don't even like if you can't start one with gifted and talented um if you have like a four there are teams that are like through 4-H and there are teams that are through the public libraries and so you know you and they actually have um like an explore team, which is lower grades. Um, I think it starts at six, maybe six to eight or six to nine. And then this one is the challenge, which is nine through 14. And then the high school robotics, which we've been really trying to um, look into, that's a lot more industrial. They don't use Legos for their robotics competitions. They use more industrial things to build their robots and stuff. But um, this is a great place to start. And Ah, I'm thankful that I kind of walked into it, <laughs> but contact Jackie Cottle or go to that coaches academy if you're interested in it, because it has been a wonderful experience for, for our district and our kids. I have a 
question. Yes. Is that just one middle school or is that, is this a district wide club or it how, is. how do you do it from different school at different schools? We have a very small district and um, we have three elementary schools and then one middle school and one high school. So um, it's just one middle school, but we're actually looking to kind of branch out and where the ages are nine through 14, we want to pull like some sixth graders in maybe and some fifth graders, but I do see all schools. So, um, you know, that may be hard for me to do, but right now I'm, my office is stationed at our middle school. So that's why we kind of started with middle school. We don't have any middle school in our district. Theirs are all K through eight. And do you, did you work with these kids? I guess after school, how would I do it if I've got, if I want a robotics league and I have four different elementary schools? Um, well, how I started, I honestly just kind of presented it to my seventh and eighth graders. And I told them that if they wanted to um, join the robotics team, that they, you know, I just had them sign a sign in sheet, you know, just to say, you know, you're interested in it. And so I really, because I wasn't real familiar with it and the kids really didn't know a whole lot about it, they were not, um, there weren't many. And I just presented it to my GT kids because I only see, like, they come to my class. They come to my classroom. So when they came to my classroom, I had a sign in sheet for them to, um, you know, fill out. And so I only had, like, it started out, I had maybe 10 kids. And then after we started, um, we went to a workshop day. It was like a robotics workshop at the Challenger Center. And it was just kind of where we were going to learn how the season was going to go. Um, I had a few drop out because it was, it was kind of overwhelming for all of us, just all this new material. But then I had five that stuck with me and then they, you know, we just worked together. And I will say at first, when I practiced with them, our, our middle school allowed me to work with them twice a week during their study hall. So it was like during fourth period for them. So I left that open for um, robotics. And then when it, when we started doing really well, we started having evening practices and their parents had been, their parents actually went with us. All of their parents went with us to, um, to the, um, to New York. So um, they've been on board. But I will say we, through this, we have been able to, um, we presented our innovation project to our fiscal court and to our board of education. And we kind of got people on board. We got our community on board. And while we presenting to the, while we were presenting to the fiscal court, there was an AEP representative there and he was very interested in what we were doing. So um, he presented a grant to us. It was a robotics grant and I had no idea about it. And um, we, we, I think we got $500 from, from AEP. So, and he came out to the school and presented it to him. It was really nice. And, um, things like that helped a lot. We were invited to go to the solar farm in Winchester. Um, so we took them there and they did a tour and they were very helpful and um, donated some different things. And so um, a lot of this was kind of presented to us by people who were, um, a lot of electricians actually were interested, like after we presented at the fiscal court and the board meeting and we have a local news channel. So, you know, we, I put a lot of stuff out on that and people kind of got involved that way and wanted to help out. Random people would just message us and say, we want to uh, donate to your robotics team, you know, for their trip. And so. A um, couple of questions in the chat for you, Jerrica. Um, please type in her name, Jackie and contact information with the robotics team? And then did you present to all seventh and eighth graders or just your GT kids? Okay, her name's Jackie Cottle. And I'm just gonna put the Challenger Center there. And then um, I, I only presented it to my seventh and eighth grade gifted and talented kids because I don't see, um, 
should say? We have some of our district housed in our middle school because we don't have enough room in our board of education. So I only see the seventh and eighth graders. Like I don't get to see um, any other kids really at this middle school, but um, the seventh and eighth grade gift and talented kids come to my classroom um, according to whatever my schedule is. So I only presented it to them and um, I really did not even know what it was to begin with. And so, and the kids kind of knew that I said, listen, I'm new to this, but I'm very interested in, you know, figuring it out. <laughs> so if you will, you know, figure it out with me and Jackie kept encouraging me, she would get on zoom calls with me like at nine 30 at night if that was the time that we had. And she explained everything like in, I told her, I said, you have explained this to me in kindergarten terms that I needed. And she has truly helped me so much. So she can help you. And we're trying to get our elementary schools involved. And we would love to have our elementary school start a robotics team. Um, and she is like, I told her, I said, I have I have spread your name. I've given it to everybody because you've been so helpful. So, um, but it is mainly like with me Look at our school, it's just the rare gifted and talented. It's, I call it the gifted and talented um, robotics team because I can't see any other kids. Did I cover yeah. all the questions there? Yeah, that was all that was in the chat. I dropped the link to the website too for the Challenger Center in there for you. Um, you're welcome. But anything else? So just uh, keep in mind, there is a professional development in July for that. And you can sign up if you want to go attend and learn more. And I'm sure Jackie probably will be there for that as well. But uh, make sure that you, if you have time, that would be a great time to learn more about it too. Um, so awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, let's see, next, one in alphabetical order, Menifee County. Are you still on there with me? I'm sorry. Uh, like, all righty, yay. I'm gonna, do you want to pull up your slides or do you want me to pull them up? Because I do have can, a link to it. You can pull them up. Okay, there they are. All right, so we'll let you, who am I talking to here? This is Lana. Lana, okay, thank you. There you are. Okay, you just popped up. Okay, I couldn't see you. Right. All right. Take it away, Lena. All right. Um, our G we've got uh, a news program at the high school and our GT students have been to uh, KET and they've worked with them there. And then KET actually come to our school and work with them and they've been working on their programs. So then our GT students are now uh, working with some GT students at the middle school and mentoring them to um create their own there as well so that's been exciting and they've been really happy to in to get into that process then our drama uh club has many gt students in it but there's more than that um that they put on a, a play and created their own artwork and they developed their own program we had gt students do the programs um then the primary talent pool students were there to help greet and serve and do. So that was fun for all of them. Okay, the next slide. Sorry, I'm, something's not working here. How's it not working? I don't know. Well, apparently I'm the problem on that one, sorry. Okay, let's try it now. Oh, you went, you're going backwards, that's it. Is that why? Uh, yeah, you go, okay, that's fine, that's fine. And then the middle one, this is, we had art, our art students, they got to engage and display all their art at the cool. Gateway Regional Art Center. And once they did that, uh, they went and toured and saw other people's works and theirs, they were really excited to see their things displayed there. And uh, then they they took a, went to a frame shop and then they went to creative uh, shop. And so they got to engage in that. We're trying to uh, that's probably our weakest point has been our visual performing arts. So now we're trying to get more of that going. So, go so that's to, local, that art. That's is in Mount local. Sterling. Uh, we're Mount in Sterling. Sterling. Yeah, that was in Mount Sterling. And uh, uh, our teachers, uh, we work with the art teachers and our GT teachers uh, to get those students into their, they've got a, like a regional show and then a, a gallery and so we went ahead and they got to put their stuff out there. 
So that was really good mm -hmm. for them. The, and then they toured Mount Sterling and, and the art, different arts things. They've got a good arts programs there. And Awesome. So was that one of your kids' artwork there on the right? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. It was one of yeah. her uh, displays. So. And then there's your final slide, I believe. Yeah. And then uh, we have, uh, we're trying to get a good consistency between high school, middle, and elementary, and then even preschool. So our high school, it always come, they come down monthly to read to the lower kids, and then our middle school students read to the younger kids, and then they also go to preschool. So we, we have a preschool oh. center that they go to as well. So they're, we're trying to work with all those different levels to get them to uh, uh, encourage them and lift them up. Mm -hmm. And so that's your GT kids that are yes. being a part of that. Awesome. Yeah. That's neat. I love a reading buddy system. That's and awesome. they, and they come up with their, they come up with the, they develop what they want to read and, and they look at the different uh, literature things. And as a team, they decide where they're going to go and what they're going to read. And um, it's, it's been really, they really like it. It's, it's been fun for them to do. Awesome. Now that's all of them, right? That's that's it. Yep. That's all right. Does anybody have any questions for Menifee County? You can always type them in the chat or feel free to unmute. Now I'm gonna stop sharing Ashley and let you take it away because you should be able to share your screen. Okay, I will try to do that. Perry County is up. Thank you so much for being willing to share. I appreciate all of you all being willing to share because you all have such great ideas in so many neat ways that you're utilizing resources in your community. And even though that they may not, other districts may not can utilize your resource, maybe it'll make them think of a resource in their community that they can utilize and uh, be able to reach out to. So that I just love that you all are sharing and thank you so much for all of you that's been so willing to share with us. Are you seeing my screen? I don't see your screen yet. Okay, let me try something. Like when you click share, it, it should come up with a window with different monitors to pick. And so wherever your um, do you have two monitors, Ashley, right now? Um, or just one? I just have one. So um, just click your number one desktop, and then you'll just have to click on the tab. There it is. I see things coming. Okay. I started screen sharing. Okay, I see your Zoom window. And so just click on that presentation over there at the top of the screen. Okay, wait a minute, where'd it go? There it is, the left tab, there you go. That should bring it up. Seeing it now. I see it now, and right. then just click the slideshow. You're good to go. Let's see if I can do this. You can do it. <laughs> I'm not, it's been a long time since I've screen shared. Yep. Okay. Is it coming up or not? I see it, but I'm seeing a black screen. Okay, it there it is. There it is. You'll want to close that. Click the little X up there for that one smaller window that you have. See the little X there? And then we can see the PowerPoint behind it. Not that X, the other the one over here to where it says zero. It's got the timer in it. Yes. That little box, we need to close that little box, I think, if we can. There's a little X right there above. Do it. I don't know what I'm doing. You're getting there. There it is. I see it. Aha. Good job. You got it. All right. I should have sent pictures to Mary because I just couldn't narrow down um, everything. It's hard. But it was very difficult. Um, we had a very, I mean, the start of the school year was very difficult as it was for a lot of districts um, in the surrounding areas. But um, once we got started, I feel like we really took off and the students were really engaged and really wanted to do everything that 
that we were throwing at them. You know, no matter what activity project, they were ready to go. They were ready to start back to school. So um, I apologize for the picture overload. I'll go through it as fast as I can. Um, but um, here are a couple of students that um, that we were working with um, to come up with original creations and we wanted to give them the opportunity to become thinkers with no matter what they do um, in order to form connected ideas. I know both of these students were working on different different projects but they were ultimately trying to form their creativity to form that connected idea. Um, here is an example of some students at West Perry who we um, zoned in on some math topics that, that they were learning in the classroom. And I, I try to pull students by their grade level and then incorporate the area of gifted and talented. Um, and no matter what it is like this, um, we went to the art section, but we were doing math. So I try to integrate the, the areas of, of creativity um, uh, with, with every activity that I do. And again, here's just some, this is one of the main ones that they like, just a little game that we would do after activities. They really love this. They really love that competitiveness. Um, to to get as far as they could with some of the activities um this was at leatherwood elementary and they just kind of came up with this on their own um, they wanted to host what was later known as leatherwood has talent they there was one student who you'll see here in just a minute her picture she created the she kind of came up with the whole idea herself um, she designed the the um, this um, the logo and the announcement, we kind of just put it out there um, uh, on the gifted and talented Facebook page. And then I know Leatherwood <clears throat> posted it on their Facebook page as well. So this was just a little um, activity right around Thanksgiving that they had in the evening. And this was all the participants. So it was open to the student body there at Leatherwood. So these were there, I see a lot of my gifted and talented students. I was there that night. So a lot of them performed and did various um, jokes or singing or, or whatever their, their talent was, but um, it, was op it was open to the student body. Um, and this was the young lady that kind of, um, designed it all from start to finish. Um, so she kind of had the idea and not only did she have the idea, but she performed in it as well, she sang. Um, and then these are a the same group of students. Um, they wrote an article that was later published in the Hazard Herald about the whole event, um, detail and start to finish. So we uh, put that on our Facebook page as well as the district page. Um, I think it was everywhere. So I know it was in the Hazard Herald and we were just super proud because they just kind of took that initiative and, um, and ran with it. Um, whoops, I've skipped one, but uh, we kind of like to just be real supportive and advocates of our students in no matter what their extracurriculars, because sometimes extracurriculars go unnoticed. Um, and we just, whether that, that first picture that I showed um, and kind of skipped, that was academics. So she was at a ball game and what they were presenting her academics at, at the ball game. And then this little fella um, won at the state competition. And we just are always, you know, putting it out there, their accomplishments. Parents like to see it, schools like to see it, the students like to see this. This just like gets them to come out of their shell and acknowledge and accepts their, their gifts and talents because sometimes we feel like, you know, they, they're kind of, they don't want to put that out there. And this kind of lets them have ownership of it and be proud of what they can do, no matter if it's speech, um, academics, basketball 
And then we want to encourage, we tried to encourage creativity in all forms. This was one of my favorite little projects. This was just like a 3D model type thing that I would take around to the primary talent pool. And this just so happened to be at Halloween, you could see. So I got to see their little creative um, costumes. And so this, but this was one, and they loved it. It was just building a 3D model. Um, and of course, I always try to get my middle school students to help with the primary talent pool. So this was one of the days that, that they were helping with that. Um, this, um, uh, the next couple of pictures was each school um, and our gifted and talented students, each school decorated a Christmas tree for downtown um, for Main Street in Hazard. Um, and so this was at East Perry and they were decorating ornaments to take to the tree downtown. So, um, and this was Wes Perry doing the same thing um, with some, some artwork for, for Christmas, Christmas trees. And something that, that, um, that I'm really proud of, and I can't, I don't, I can't really take any ownership of it, but just here lately, the schools have taken on um, artists of the week um, and just so happens that the first couple of artists of the week have been gifted and talented students. So this was a student uh, from R.W. Combs. Um, she was artist of the week and so she got to design that. And so, and they're doing it, they're following it up and they're doing it each and every week. And other schools are seeing this and they're following suit. They're kind of doing this and, you know, acknowledging different students. And it's not always a gifted and talented student of the week, but a lot of times uh, it is. And uh, they, I know my gifted and talented students help, you know, orchestrate and plan and get that together. And that's just some of her um, work that it's, it's really good. Um, and this was another um, artist of the week at Viper Elementary. You can see some of her artwork. Um, and she was artist of the week and on showcase for that week. And the, um, the Hornets, die, the picture there, um, she designed that herself um, and worked with a local um, printing company, t-shirt printing company. And that she designed the t-shirts for the incoming kindergartners. So, and you'll see later that she also helped with the um, kindergarten registration that we just recently had. But all the kindergartners got one of the t-shirts that, that she had designed herself. So that was pretty cool. I thought that was cool. Again, we're always uh, encouraging them to be themselves and be creative. And these kiddos, I can't remember who was behind um, the giraffe, but they're always willing to just step up and, and mentor those primary talent pool. Uh, here again, you see uh, gifted and talented students who are working uh, after school, I think this was at um, our back, at a back to school bash. So they were setting up stations and doing face painting and just doing wh whatever was needed of them um, at that back to school bash. Um, here are the students, they love to decorate and make something. So we made the 3D snowflake, which they thought were was really cool. Um, so we always did that at Christmas. Um, oops, and I skipped one. Uh, but okay, to the Challenger Center. The Challenger Center is a big part of our gifted and talented um, program. We do things, we um, collaborate with them often, as I've heard many of you all say. Um, last summer, these uh, two students were chosen as our uh, as student ambassadors to um, develop questions and work together as a group. They actually were um, able to um, communicate with astronauts and the International Space Station. So it was a really prestigious honor. And um, 
and they they enjoyed it I enjoyed being there with them and it was just very cool to hear their questions that they developed and actual astronauts you know answer um their questions so it was a very cool event and so there they are talking and communicating with um international space station or houston at that that picture um and then that was the picture um the lieutenant governor was there that day so like i said it was a very prestigious honor um to be selected as those students um, here is an activity that we did, a class trip um, of fifth graders went to see their classmate perform at the Mountain Arts Center, the Kentucky Opry. She sings at the Junior Kentucky Opry um, during the day and on weekends whenever they are in session. And so we took a class trip um, to see her perform um, over there in Prestonsburg. Um, we are always allowing our students to present at the monthly board meetings. So they, and they love that. They pr put together pr presentations of what's going on at their school and whatever activities that's going on, whatever they feel is relevant at, um, at their school to present at each monthly board meeting. So, and then this was just after one of the board meetings. And this is something that is super cool. Um, this is a group of high school students. Um, I, not all of them are in the Gifted and Talented program, but most are. This is uh, Perry Central has the only drone, competitive drone team in the state of Kentucky. And so I know they, they were um, out, out of state this weekend competing at the national level. And I think I would have, I'm gonna have to double check because it just occurred this weekend, but I think they came in fifth place. So they're always setting up after school, they're in the gym practicing. And so they're in, like I said, they're the only competitive drone team in the state of Kentucky. And so um, really proud of them for what they've done. This was a, at an open house and West Perry gifted and talented students, all of these are gifted and talented students. They set up a booth to kind of be two and one to help inform parents because parents always are having questions about, you know, papers and, you know, the gifted and talented program overall. So, um, each school in Perry County has a GT lead. So the GT lead was there as well, but so to help answer questions for parents. Um, and these kiddos had set up like a little coding activity to kind of occupy the kiddos while the parents might be asking questions or the kids might've just wanted to go by and see that something cool was going on here. And, and they kind of ran the show there. So that was a little booth set up there, um, a little coding event. And again, here are our students. Um, I had a fall carnival, I think this was, um, doing some face painting and some tattooing, it looks like. Um, again, um, here is a group of our students. Um, I think this was um, STLP and video production. They do lots of things um, with that. And this is um, West Perry's STLP group. And then here is a group of students who set up a career day. And so they decided they were going to tell what career they wanted to do. And then I know K through eight came through and they kind of told, you know, details about their career, um, what they wanted to be when they um, grew up and the little ones loved it. So it's very informative. I see a brain right there. She was telling about the brain. Um, um, not only 
are these two, but these two kids are at students. I shouldn't say kids. These are two eighth graders at East Perry. They run the show in the mornings with the announcements. They um, do the pledge. They give any announcements. They tell jokes. Like it's, if you are half asleep when you go in this building in the morning, they wake you up <laughs> because they are just so peppy and friendly and uh, getting everybody ready to learn and just getting set in the environment. And I've noticed it's just not at East Perry that does that. Um, all schools are, are allowing their gifted, some of their gifted and talented students to just kind of go on the mic on the, in the morning, intercom, I should say, and just kind of get the students ready to learn. So that's really good. Um, here's that group of students that was helping with the kindergarten um, uh, registration. Those are all four of my gifted and talented students at Viper. There's more, but um, this little fellow did something completely on his own. I have, I can't take any ownership of it, but I can brag about him. Um, he, um, I think it was about November, December, he set up on his own a coat drive for the region and he advertised himself. He put it out there on social media himself. He encouraged and he was obviously you see here he was on WIMT speaking about it and asking for coat donations. He collected the coats himself. Um, so he was like, displaying those leadership skills like awesome so he did that completely on his own um this young lady again we use like I said I use a lot of my middle school students to help mentor and help the primary talent pool in activities that they are doing there again and then at the high school we have a wonderful drama and art and choir and band program. So we always like to acknowledge um, the students and what they're doing, when, whether it's because they put on many productions, the bands at um, all the sporting events, the drama's always putting things um, together, several major uh, productions throughout the year that's just unbelievable. Um, so we always like to give them credit and come and support them and put that out there and advertise for them. And not only do they do that, but they go out to the um, elementary schools and tell about what they do once they get to high school and encourage students to become um, members of drama, choir, band, um, art. Um, so they always are encouraging and it's just the work that you can just go in the auditorium and just sit and the creativity that's going on in there is, is wonderful. Um, and then we just like to be a part of the student, um, their accomplishments. For instance, this student, um, he received, I was privileged enough to, to be at this event, um, but he received the Wawa Jones Award which is a very prestigious award. Um, it's where um, it's given, there's only one given in the state of Kentucky and you have to excel at three sports as well as excel in the classroom. And this young man does both like really, really well. So that's, we just like to acknowledge their, their accomplishments. This is something that we did last year. Um, and again, it was a, an idea that the students brought up. We were kind of in that middle of COVID, um, you know, environment, and they wanted to do something for the healthcare workers. So we set out um, containers to collect snacks at, for our health care workers. <clears throat> and they would, they, the little ones would write letters and then I collected more snacks than you would ever, you ever could imagine. But we eventually got it delivered. You see, we still having to wear the masks, but we took it to all the healthcare <coughs> facilities 
um, that we could in Perry County. Um, and they were very appreciative and they, their artwork and their letters and just the, the thought that was good. Um, let's see. And then we, um, for the first time last year, and uh, Ms. Gorman, you may want to interject here and add to anything. Um, last year was our first GT banquet that we had. Um, it was super nice. Uh, the students really loved it. I loved it after we got it, you know, put together. Um, it made the students feel really special. We sent out personalized invitations to every uh, GT student and their family. They RSVP'd to tell us how many people were coming so we would know how much, you know, um, food to prepare for them. So, because we had, um, we had refreshments, we had t-shirts, we had medals, certificates. And then as they were called across the stage, up on the screen there would be their picture and a short bio to where they would come up and be presented with um, their award um, given to by Ms. Gorman and the superintendent. And I mean, it was just really, it's really, it was really a big deal. We did it again this year. It was still, it's still a big deal. Um, the students really loved it. The families, the auditorium was full. Um, we had to do it. We did it in sessions because we do have um, a lot of schools, <laughs> you know, uh, represented. So um, it was a full house, packed house. Um, we just really like to make the students feel special. Whoops. That was our t-shirt station. And um, we gave out t-shirts and had the refreshments there out front. I wanted to go back. Let's you hit see. your left arrow button that could work on it on your keyboard. Okay. Left arrow should do it. Because I wanted to show some of, the, some of the artwork. I don't know how it skipped all this. Some, but at the banquet, um, the students would bring in something that they wanted to display. It could be artwork. It could be, um, it was mostly artwork, um, but some of it was classwork, something that a student just made a really good score on, something that they were proud of. Um, and so um, this little girl right here, she has written um, and published a book through Scholastic. So I, I mean, that's really, uh, really cool. I know she, and they don't really like to take credit. Like I had to, some of them, I had to like say, please bring that, let's showcase that. Um, but this year, even more brought, this was pictures from last year. Um, so I'm hoping that just, it just continues to be even more that will bring it out. I love um, that because you see that all the time for athletics, but you don't always see it for GT. That's a neat idea. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, it was, like I said, last year was our first year to do the banquet, and we did it again this year, um, and then we saw an even more um, interest in bringing stuff in, so which prompted us to do, um, to put on our to-do list, um, so <clears throat> with the, the district art night, but here is, we've already kind of got it planned that for Next year, each month, we're do, we've already got something written down that we're going to do each month. We kind of br already broke it down. Um, and so in October, we are planning what we're going to call Super Saturdays. And we're planning on working with HCTC, UPIC, Moorhead, and Alice Lloyd and hosting something here at PCC. It would involve two weekends, two Saturdays, of course, of activities where students can participate in various stations. And those stations may be STEAM related, art projects, um, mystery and history lessons, music and more, just kind of whatever. We've touched base with all of the, um, the colleges and kind of just to see what they could offer and then kind of incorporate our high school students um, at the same time, like the drone team, for instance, they might would help, you know, in certain areas because this would be kind of more geared towards fifth through eighth graders. 
Um, but um, so we're working on that. And then we're um, going to collaborate with the hauler to set up STEAM days for our middle school students as well. We've got it scheduled to go to Newton's Attic for our fourth graders. And then that the district art night. Um, we have a district art night for high school at both high schools at Buckhorn and at Perry Central. But with the increased interest in the arts um, here in Perry County, we want to incorporate elementary students and our middle school students in that those district art nights that the high school um, have because it's uh, it's a success both Buckhorns and um, and Perry Central's was a huge success this year um, and then we always like to end the year with our gifted and talented banquet which I'm sure we'll do do again next year so but I'm sorry for all the pictures <laughs> uh, it's hard to pick isn't it it's very hard to pick does anybody have any questions for Ashley or anything like the funding for the GT banquet? How does that come about? Like, is that through a grant or is that something the di district just does for as kind of to support those kids? Where does the funding come for that? That's just a question I have. Sorry, Mary. Um, yes. So it, it's kind of twofold. Um, the food for the banquet, our food service covers. And so they are wonderful to set up the food for any event that includes students in our district. So right. they're wonderful. And I bet most food services will do that, especially if you have um, the free lunch program. So they cover all of that. And then what we did with our budget is, you know, the GT budget from the state isn't much. It basically covers the salary. We intentionally set aside funding uh, for particular things that we wanted to do. Gotcha. Um, so the awards for the GT banquet was one of those things. I think our total cost is like $1,200, $1,300, somewhere around there. That includes mm -hmm. the decoration and the awards. And the students attic that we plan to take our identified GT students to in fourth grade, we're going to fundraise. So we're going to identify them early, like gotcha. September, October, in the fall, and then uh, set a go to fundraise. We've already got our prices, how much it's going to cost us. And then uh, mm -hmm. um, we've got some gear up and Perry Promise stuff that we can pull from if we can't fundraise enough, if the kids can't do that. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. There's sometimes, like if you're taking them somewhere, there's that transportation grant you can get mm -hmm. to sometimes to help with those. I know. And if, yeah, that might yeah. also be something. Oh, that's awesome. That is fabulous. Thank you all so much for sharing. Does anybody else have any questions? Sorry, I always jump in there. I always got, let's see. Okay. What grade are those students? Elementary, I love that. I'm sorry, I missed that. K-8, Christy, you were, uh, K-8 varies. Most of the students led projects were anywhere from fifth to eighth. Okay. How did the fund all of that? That is a great idea. Food service. Okay, you already said that. Sorry, I missed the chat. Sorry. <laughs> you had already answered that, my bad. <laughs> Try to answer as they put the questions in there. Uh, thank you. I was just too busy looking at the screen, not paying attention. My bad. Uh, on that one, thank you all for uh, make, watching that too, Christy, on that. Um, any other questions for Perry County? Just some great things shared, uh, great ideas. If not, I think we're almost right here at the end. I will share my screen real quick because I think there's only like two more, three more slides, I think. So I'm, I put in the chat for you all the, um, some of the links here so that you all can access those. Um, I went ahead and add the presenter, the uh, one that, you, uh, Ms. Hurt mentioned on Hooked on Science, the Jason Lindsay. So trying to add to that Padlet. So it's just a resource page for you all to be able to go and look at. So anytime that there's something that you think should be added on there, just so that people are aware of, please be sure to share and send our way. Um, the KVEC professional learning calendar, we have all kinds of where summer's coming up. We have lots of trainings available for teachers. Uh, through the different content areas, uh, different things for administrators. I uh, also want to just remind you about the uh, Dr. Whitaker. Uh, uh, Todd Whitaker is going to be at Johnson County for what great teachers do differently. So sharing that out. Um, 
And then of course our folder that has the information from our meeting and we'll have this recording uh, in there for you all. Um, I did want to go ahead and share with you all the dates for next year. So this is our dates. I did not have a November, December meeting because the November is right when you come back from Thanksgiving break and you all are usually so swamped at that time. And I think the December date was actually Christmas. So I know that's not, so we didn't, don't have a November, December date this year. And I will do calendar invites probably June, July-ish uh, and send those out to you all with a Zoom link already in it. But I always like to send the reminders like the a few days before. And then you'll notice I did not put the February date in there because a lot of times that falls on the Gage Conference. And so trying to avoid that so that for those of you that attend that, we, we don't want to uh, cause any kind of conflict there for you all um, with that. For next year, um, just topics for future meetings. I love the district share out. I kind of like the idea of you all just sharing some things that you feel you know really good about and uh, we'll continue doing that. And I'll reach out to some districts that haven't got a chance uh, to share out, um, uh, to, to start out the next year, to share some things of things they've done maybe through the summer to provide for some of their GT kids or things that they've got planned for this next year to do. So kind of looking at that, but I think that is a great way for you all to network and to share some of the great things that you all are doing um, and just making sure other people are, uh, are aware and may cause you to come up with your own unique idea. But any of those things, please send me an email. If you want to put something in the chat, please do that. Um, or, um, or just send me an email or mention it in the feedback survey for me. But mentioning the feedback survey, that is the last thing. You do get ELA credit. So when you complete this survey, um, when you click submit, it should email a certificate to the email you provide. So, um, and it is already pre-filled. It's called GT uh, Cadre, I believe is what I called it. And then um, I usually just put KVEC staff as the presenter and then the ELA number's already in there. But if not, I did include that in the chat as well. But if you all have any questions, I hope you all have a wonderful summer and enjoy some much needed time off please be sure to take care of yourselves and to uh, be sure to give yourself some time off from all of the hard work that you're doing because you definitely need it but thank you so much and uh, thank you for taking the time to be with us today and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out